Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching for take few days before we created the one shot video evolution x rom for the oneplus nord 2 now it's time came for the full review of this most popular and the oldest rom in the world of custom roms flashing of this rom is simple you must be on the oxygen s11 with the twrp installed on your phone use only android 13 twrp given under the video description if you didn't have that twrp follow the icard video to install it now download the rom zip file, remove all the pins or the password from the phone. Power up the phone, boot it into the TWRP using advanced menu or using the ADB commands. In the TWRP tap install and flash the rom zip file. Once done, tap wipe, select format data and then reboot to the system. So today in this video we will do the basic testing of what's working, rom performance and the CPU throttling test to confirm the CPU stability which amazing features this rom offers and finally i've shown some major bugs and issues with my final body now without further ado let's get started on the new adventure on the new adventure so device booted with the amazing boot animation of evolution x so it's a beginning of the evolution for the oneplus nord 2 I did the complete setup of device and it's booted to the Evolution X launcher, so ROM didn't have the Pixel launcher. Let's jump to the about phone to check the details of the new ROM. This ROM is based on the Android 13 with the Mercury clock register egg. This is the Evolution X7.5 version menu door unofficial build for the OnePlus Nord 2 Denny's. It has this awesome easter egg of flying Evolution X logo. Security patch is of latest 5th January 2023. New February security patches will come soon. Kernel version is 4.14.295 build date with the Proton Clang tool chain 13. Build date of ROM is 3rd February 2023. Now it's time to check the basic functionalities like the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi hotspots, both are working good. But there is some issues for the Wi-Fi calling that we will discuss at the end of the video. Bluetooth is working with the HD order codecs like the LDAC, APTX, etc. GPS location is working with the good accuracy. NFC is available, auto brightness is actually working but the sensor has issues that we will show you in the bug section of the video. VLT incoming and the outgoing calling are working, 5G networks for the ATL sims are also working good. ROM has the call recording function and you will find the recorded calls under the call log section. Unlimited photo backup is working for the Google photo application. All the sensors are working like the accelerometer proximity, magnetometer, compass, gyroscope, but the light sensor showing some issues that we will check later. Other functions like the ear proximity is working fine, microphone, ear speaker are also working good. So overall calling function will work properly on this ROM as all call related sensors are working fine. Flashlight is working, multi-touch function is also working fine. Touch panel is also working very good. Now it's time to check the important part that is camera. Still this device didn't caught any working Oxynos camera but it comes with the inbuilt Google Go camera application. This has some features like the camera filter but it's not working. Portrait mode for the both the front and the main camera is working. Camera has the night and HDR mode both are working fine. Wide angle camera modes are not working but it has solution by using the Gcam. Front camera has the snapchat emojis feature it's working very good. So to overcome some bugs and to get more features you can use the Google Gcam MGC build. Link is given under the video description. It has the nightscape similar to the night mode of the Go Cam. Portrait mode working fine. Camera has the wide angle camera modes like the 1x, 0.9x and 0.4x. In the video recording, no slow motion mode is available but the time lapse feature is working good. For the video shooting, 4K 60fps still not available but the 180p 60fps is working good. Panorama mode feature is working while photosphere mode is not working. For tuning the photos you get the bunch of the tunables like the HDR plus mode, face retouching etc. So use the both the cameras to overcome the bugs and the issues of the camera section. Other important safety related part is the wide one status. So ROM has the L1 security but still there is one issue so we can't use the Netflix. That we will show in the bug section but Amazon Prime is working good. Device storage is encrypted so your data is safe though your device got stolen or lost. So we tested almost all the basic things now it comes the part of stability and the performance. First we will see the stability of device during the heavy task. I ran the CPU throttling test for the 5 minutes and the 20 threads. 
temperature before running the test is normal it's about 32 to 36 degrees celsius after starting the test immediately graph shown the yellow line but they are not so prominent after stopping the test after 5 minutes i got the score of 91% which is very good score even though the stock oxygen s12 having the issues in the thermal performance after test temperature of device risen up to 45 degrees celsius so overall rom seems good for the thermal performance now let's check out the geekbench score performance along with the real life user experience of this rom rom is very snappy not a single hiccup found in the performance if we enable the force 90 hertz under the one plus setting of the device rom will constantly runs on the 90 hertz even the camera application is running on the 90 hertz after running the test i got a score of 826 and a 2440 so multi core performance seems not good single core is okay if we check the old custom rom test results pixel experience and the surface has the better results than this rom still i didn't felt at a single point this rom is lagging behind the other custom roms in the real life uses for the open gel graphics api i got the score of 4989 it's the highest score till the date even it's closer to the previous score of 5022 in the geekbench history while the hulkan graphics score found okay it's about 4380 which is lagging behind the previous scores so overall performance of this rom is not so high but it's okay still i can't feel this score difference in the real life uses now we'll see some amazing customizations that this rom offers under the main setting you get the evolver tab in this customizations you get the themes under the theme section you get the theme style tab here you get lots of different themes like the tonal spot vibrant expressive spreads all these themes have the different accents and the background colors. Under the color space setting, you can choose which wallpaper ascent can be used for the material theming like home screen wallpaper or the lost screen wallpaper or the combination of both. We get the luminance and the chroma factor sliders along with the tint background toggle. Under the dark theme option, we get the custom themes like the black, clear, vivid, monet, etc. I especially like the clear background theme which gives the home screen wallpaper as a background of your device system. ROM also has the custom color for the lost screen clock along with the fonts. There are a bunch of amazing fonts who get sphere which looks cool. There are lots of the headline body fonts, system icon packs, signal icon styles, Wi-Fi icon styles, icon shapes, navbar styles who gets under the theme setting. Except this all the old school customization who can found under the status bar tab. Under the quick setting who gets the height label and the vertical layout setting for the quick setting panel which gives the something different look that we will never seen before. Some animation setting we get here which looks nice. Under the gestures tab we get the all the pixel gestures settings. Under the lock screen we get the edge lightning feature and it's working very good. We get the bunch of under display fingerprint icons and the animations. You can check some of them as on the screen. In the lock screen setting, we get the lock screen shortcuts and they are working good. We can add the different shortcuts on the lock screen. Under the animation tab, we get the screen of animation setting, but it's only working without the AOD mode. We have to disable the always on display to use this. Lots of power menu animations we get here. We can check the preview of them in the video. Under the miscellaneous setting, you get some battery saving feature like disabling the Google services if your Google Play services is draining more battery. But remember, this will make some Google features unusable. Parallel application is amazing feature. Here we can add different users like here I added the four you take and under that user you can add multiple parallel applications. I enabled the parallel application mode for the DRM info application and you get the two different DRM info application under the app drawer. Play Store application automatically gets the parallel mode once we enable this feature. Under the game space, we get the bunch of the different settings to improve our gaming experience. Music Pulse is available here and is working good on the lock screen, on AOD, and on the navbar. We get the other battery saving features like the blocking sensor for the all the system or user applications. 
wake lock blocker and the alarm blocker is also available but use these settings to save the battery intensively except the uolo tab who gets the oneplus customization under the system setting we already seen this in the previous rom like the battery charging limit high brightness mode toggle ambient display gestures where we get the some amazing features like the pickup gesture hand wave and the pocket mode pickup mode is not working but the hand wave is working very good it can help us to save more battery even if you want to use the always on display mode vibration strength control is available use the low level of vibration strength it will give you the original feel of stock oxynos haptics except this some common features are available under the display setting like the live display color modes tap to wake or double tap to wake on the lock screen full screen applications all are working good on the home screen in the home setting of the launcher who gets the theme icon for the app drawer quick actions for the recent panel like the screenshot lens and the clear all with the background opacity and scroll vibration haptic feedbacks for the recent panel is available under the miscellaneous setting there is a taskbar available i already shown usability of taskbar in other videos it has the quick shortcuts pro access for the dock applications with the app drawer anywhere in the system drag and drop feature to use any dock application as a split screen is also working but one drawback is here it's not dismissible even if you long press on the edges of the taskbar we need to restart the system where if you disable the taskbar in the setting to permanently disable the taskbar who gets the hidden application feature here we just need to check mark the application which you want to hide now it's time to show you the major bugs and the issues present in the rom while testing the safety net cts profile is getting failed which is very disappointing so we can't run the security related application in this rom who can use the icard video to overcome this issue again if you check the device play protection in the google play services application it's showing the uncertified so some applications can't be installed on the uncertified device like the netflix you can use the icard video to overcome this issue also in the lock screen who gets the media cover art but actually it's not showing any blur effect on the lock screen hey google activation is also not available in the google application it's showing the language is not supporting even though we selected the appropriate language but we can use the edge swipe gesture to activate the google assistant under the network setting we get the wifi call in setting i tried to use it but i can't able to make any calls using the wifi call in next bug is already told you while doing the sensor test that is the light sensor app showing the device didn't have the light sensor it's a weird issue i found in the all the custom rom but the auto brightness is now working good as compared to the previous builds these are some issues most of them can be solved as i told in the icard video so you can feel the bugless rom experience for the evolution next with the great stability performance and loads of customizations that only few rom offers so i recommend you to use this rom if you can bear these bugs and want to solve them manually that's it for today guys hope you liked this video if yes then do like and share this video subscribe our channel press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content thanks for watching take care bye bye <laughs>